Here we are, another episode of Changemakers, and we're going to talk to Brigida. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about um, your start in fashion and the sustainability world, just for some context. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm Brigitte Helmerson. Um, I have a label by the same name. Uh, I founded that around uh, 10 years ago now, um, and I started it in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, so I'm actually half Swedish, half Australian. So I grew up in Australia. My mum's Australian. Um, first started sewing when I was around 12, um, and I've just always wanted to make things since a young age. So that's where it really began for me. Um, originally I was self-taught um, and then ended up going and uh, doing a lot of uh, short courses and things to learn pattern making and sewing and print making and, and lots of different um, things. So, um, so okay. yeah, and then moved to Sweden around five years ago um, okay. and opened a store here. <laughs> Fabulous. And how did you um, how did you come to feel equipped to uh, start your own small business what 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 prompted you to take that leap well to be honest I've actually always wanted to have my own business even since I was really young I, mm. I first started my own label um I mean it was also under my name but it, it kind of I, I, I paused for quite a while but when I was like 18 years old um and back then I lived in Perth Western Australia um and it was a very different time. You know, I made a small collection and I went around to all these boutiques locally and they placed mm. orders basically on the spot. That doesn't really happen wow. anymore. But back then, mm. you know, it, it was a little bit easier for small business in that way, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And a bit more like in-person meeting. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have a website or anything. I mean, it was well before that was a big thing as well. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, why have you chosen your specialty of uh, zero waste pattern cutting? Like how did that come into your, your vision for, for fashion? So when I first started, um, I guess my dream was originally to be a designer. Um, but then mm -hmm. to get there, I wanted to also learn pattern making, sewing and everything. Um, and uh, as I started doing that, I became more and more interested in the technical side of things as well. And so I've been a pattern maker as well for a very long time, um, both for myself and for other people. Um, and when I started working, I uh, moved to Melbourne in around 20, I want to say 2013. No, sorry, mm -hmm. that's wrong. 2007 maybe. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I started working for a costume designer. Um, and uh, so I was doing a lot of pattern making and, we're doing small production runs. And then I also worked um, for a local label in Melbourne for a while as an assistant designer. And so I started to really see, you know, I was involved heavily in the whole process from the design to prototyping to the manufacturing, which was always done locally. Um, so I started to really see mm. also the waste. Um, and I guess mm. because I had my technical background as well, uh, I just became really interested in it. I just thought to myself, there has to be, a way to mm -hmm. reduce or even eliminate this waste um, but still make beautiful garments, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really where it began for me, yeah. Um, and have you found that challenging, like zero waste pattern cutting? Like how do you, yeah, <laughs> how yes. do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, I have to say, I mean, parts of it get, get less challenging over time, but I think that's mainly because over the years I've really built up or we have in the business built up uh, a really good library of shapes. Um, I think mm. one thing with zero waste uh, pattern cutting, especially if you're going to be doing it for production, it takes a really long time to develop it. Even if it seems to be a quite simple shape, um, just working out all of your processes, how it will work for many different fabric widths and fabric types, different sizes, things like that. It can be a really long development time. But then once you have a lot of core shapes, then it does get easier. Um, mm. uh, so, yeah, it has definitely been challenging, and especially in the early days um, when we started working mainly with just zero waste, which is, is maybe about – I mean, about 10 years ago, I started working with zero waste and it wasn't until about four or five years ago that we did it exclusively. 
Um, so okay. it took that oh. long to sort of figure out the best way to do it. Um, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. Um, yeah, have what are some other like what are some go to strategies when you're implementing um, zero waste and like how did you learn about them? So, um, well, in terms of zero waste in general, um, when I first got interested in this concept, I, um, uh, you know, researched to see if there were any books out there. And I found a book which is still, I think, one of the only technical books aimed at industry, I guess, on zero waste. So it was Zero Waste Fashion Design by Timo Rasan and, and Holly McQuillan. Um, it's been around for quite a while now. And that really inspired me in the beginning um, and then mm-hmm. really find, you know, my own processes and ways of working that was just through play and experiment for a really really long time Um, so I mean in the beginning there were so many challenges because I would have an idea for something and then I'd start making the pattern or trying to figure out how to do it and it would become over complicated or it wouldn't sit nicely on the body Um, so I found it very very challenging so for me really a go-to strategy over the years that I've learned myself is to always try to um, minimize the, the the panels and details as much as possible so mm. to pair back a little bit and not over complicate it it's very easy to sort of start thinking of oh, these mm. triangles and pieces maybe I can fit it in here and do this I think if the garment is going to take you three times as long to make as a regular garment then it's not worth doing mm-hmm. it yeah. So that's a big thing for me. I always have to remind myself when I'm doing a new design to just sort of try to always bring it back to basics and, and keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's an, that's so interesting to know like your rule of thumb when you're making it. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, and what are some maybe like, unexpected twists and turns as, you, as you've started this, this kind of business? So I guess when, yeah, when, when I first started uh, my label back in uh, it was 2012 in Melbourne, um, we only made clothing and, and had a little boutique there as well and a studio and sold mm-hmm. uh, clothing um, and um, did a lot of zero waste designs. And I mean, they sold well, but people didn't really understand what zero waste was. Um, mm. And it was quite difficult to sort of get that across to people um, mm-hmm. because they weren't seeing it really they weren't understanding like but what does that actually mean and especially as a consumer that's not sewing themselves you know you have to mm-hmm. find a way to explain so I guess over the years we've sort of learned to adapt and change and um, uh, actually during the pandemic is when we first started selling sewing patterns and that was really the beginning mm. for us being able to show people how it works um, and so, yeah, we've just, we have changed and moved around a lot and learned to adapt and grow, I guess, yeah, in a way. I think at the moment now we're finally at a point where we feel like we're doing things right for us and for our business mm-hmm. and we want to do it. But it's it's taken a long time, yeah. Uh, it's taken wow. a long time, yeah. And as wow. a small yeah, company, it's easier to adapt, I think, or it's easier to sort of spend the first, mm. you know, bunch of years actually kind of exploring and figuring out the best way to go yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and have you felt like you found um support from the fashion community or the sustainability community or yeah where have you kind of seen your community take you um as you've built this business up yeah definitely so when we were selling only garments um you know really had um, a good following in melbourne of people who just really wanted to support locally made um Mm -hmm. uh, and um so that's sort of where we started and i noticed you know when we moved to sweden i I think it was great but you know we we had to sort of start again with our customer base because Mm -hmm. even though our customers really loved us uh, in australia they didn't you know it's this buy locally you know with not wanting to ship things necessarily all the time all over the world um but in terms of the last few years um there's yeah it's been a huge uh, response from the online sewing community um in terms of working with zero waste patterns um it's been really amazing to hear feedback from people who also perhaps didn't sew before so it's inspired Mm. them to sew um and also realizing 
you know, how much waste there is. I think for a lot of people there's been this click moment. Um, if they've sewn a garment using a more conventional pattern and then they're able to place everything perfectly into a puzzle, it's very satisfying mm-hmm. to realise, you know. Um, so we have a really supportive uh, community through a lot of now of home sewing uh, sort of area, actually. Very cool. I like that that was um, an unexpected um, source. Was, yeah, definitely unexpected, but it's been amazing. Yeah. Um, and and as you kind of widen and spread the word about zero waste fashion, have you encountered um, any any roadblocks as you've tried to do it, um, or as you try to talk about these things in the fashion industry? Um, maybe any any backlash from from the fashion world or or something like that. Uh, I'd have to say, for us anyway, not really. Um, mm-hmm. I think before we did the sewing patterns, it was a bit of a challenge to kind of show people what we could do and what we were doing. Um, But since we've done the sewing patterns, it's also, you know, people can see exactly how we make our garments. They can see the process. Mm -hmm. Um, So, no, I'd have to say not really, no. Mm -hmm. And um, have you implemented other... um sustainable elements to your business or is the zero waste like difficult enough and so you just focus uh, actually, on actually we do so I mean firstly with the fabrics that we source um we always mm. source uh, natural fibers and uh, organic cottons uh, European linens um and we try to use really just one or two fabric qualities um and fabrics that we know are going to last a long time so it's a big thing I think for me anyway I feel like it's just really important to buy less that's one of the things that I think you know needs to change mm-hmm. actually. Um, and so you know just trying to yeah make clothing that's going to last that people are going to love um, that they'll have for a long time but also we do use a lot of um, repurposed vintage and secondhand fabrics um, so okay. you can actually see in the shelving behind here um, up mm. above the back, that's uh, well we have all, them all over the shop actually but we collect uh, wherever we can, uh, vintage textiles. And there's actually a lot in Sweden um, because it has a long history of textile production that doesn't go oh, on cool. as much now, but back in the day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we try to, as often as we can, also repurpose. Um, and when we do have remnants and pieces left over, we will patchwork them into uh, garments as well. Cool. And so does that mean that like people can come into the store and bring some Um, older vintage garments yeah we get asked that occasionally I mean technically yes we've done a few projects like that um so I mean we wouldn't say no absolutely um Mm -hmm. whether we're using someone else's fabrics or our own I have done a few projects recently um working with some fabrics that like a friend of mine for instance inherited some beautiful fabrics from his mother um so Mm. we made garments with our designs using those fabrics so we do get those projects sometimes but it's not that many people that end up doing it actually um Mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard for people to visualize how it's going to (laughs) look to be honest yeah Um, yeah so sometimes you have to make it (laughs) (laughs) yeah you have to you have to tell them what they will like (laughs) Yeah. yeah um and your garments, I know, I understand, are made in-house and often made to order by you. Yes. Um, so how could, like, how do you see, do you see your business being limited then? Because, like, you're you're one person, like, you can't, you know, you can't, like, maybe, I, yeah, I guess I see, how do you see the trajectory of your business in terms of growth? Um, or maybe you, you're not trying to, you know, become huge because maybe that would defeat the purpose of what you're doing but yeah how do you balance um doing it all yourself yeah so I mean that's the thing that we often talk about and how we want to move forward um at the moment it works really well for us being owner operated and that's mainly because the last few years we've had other projects and things on the go so it's been a little bit much got two kids as well so you know um, Mm -hmm. it's been a bit Mm -hmm. much and and yeah (laughs) From my own experience, having been in and out of my own business ideas and things since I was quite young, I found that any time I tried to scale up the business, it was a lot of work, a lot of stress for very little mm. reward. Um, but we do definitely have plans to scale, but certainly not too big. I don't really want to ever have a sort of 
endless growth model. You know, that's something I really mm. I um, but we would love to get the business um, next year when we can focus more on it again. Uh, we'd like to grow it to a point where we can have a few people employed. Um, and with the making to order and making locally, our, our aim would be to continue to do that, but we would employ people to help with that and set up, uh, you know, a space here to be able to do that. Okay, fabulous. Yeah. And and how do you see, um, like, a current existing business um how would you um, recommend or suggest uh the application of a zero waste um policy to an already existing um fashion business perhaps i think maybe and i mean in a way this is how we did it too right from the beginning Mm -hmm. introduce it slowly so start Mm -hmm. to implement it in some of your pieces and then you can as you figure it out and, and work out the best way to do it you can then um, slowly replace more and more styles with zero mm. waste. Um, but I think it, it can be challenging as well because, I mean, we love, you know, oversized and um, kind of bigger silhouettes and it's not for everybody. Um, so it depends mm-hmm. a lot who, on yeah, what type of business you have, who your customer is. Um, I think there's other ways. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's other ways to you know, utilize remnants and, and things like that as well, such as textile recycling yeah. and, and different projects. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that you, I think on your Instagram, you collect strips yeah. and you're going to, in a, yeah. in a vault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a long uh, project, but it's coming together slowly. <laughs> it's actually something I've done before, but um, it was, uh, yeah, I, actually a long time ago now in Melbourne. It was a, a rug that was eight, mi- no, sorry, eight metres is not wrong, right, four metres long by about one and a half wide. Um, and it was completely made with all of these strips um, and remnants. Wow. Um, and it looked amazing, but very, very time consuming. So it's a love project, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. No, I thought that that was very creative. Um yeah, because I could imagine it could be difficult for every time you make a garment to have no cutoffs, but if yeah, you also yeah. then took those cutoffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then um, what's a favorite sustainability innovation that you've seen popping up or have wanted to start including or in your designs or something fun? Um, like so I guess in terms of sustainability innovation, for me, I'm always um, – really into anything that's recycling textiles somehow um Mm -hmm. i mean whether they're like super new or not um but uh, there's one uh, company that i've been following for a long time the new denim co uh, and they Mm -hmm. recycle uh, factory off cuts of denim um into new fabric and i just think they do such a beautiful job we've wanted to use their fabrics for a long time but the minimums are still too high for us unfortunately um (laughs) And uh, then there's also um, a really exciting company in Sweden called Renew Cell, uh, and they actually um, recycle used textiles and used clothing, which is quite a new thing um, because that was quite hard to do in the past. Um, so I'd love to be able to, at some point, yeah, be able to use those textiles or find a way. I mean, we don't personally have a lot of textile waste, but even just to mm-hmm. be able to use those fabrics. Um, instead of new, you know, cottons and things like that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting offshoot for your company because since you don't have a lot of waste, it, it would be even – you'd be going even the extra mile to take other people's waste. Yeah, and, and that would, for me, be ideal. Like, that would be the dream mm-hmm. scenario. But, um, yes. Yeah, very cool. Possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sure. Yes. Um <laughs> always in a in a small business uh yeah my my dad is a small business owner so yeah yeah it's very ups and downs yeah (laughs) Yeah. um fabulous so um what do you see the future of sustainable fashion looking like um does it does it bring you hope what what do you see happening well yeah i've been asked this uh, recently actually and um i'd love to say that i'm really hopeful and i think i (laughs) I really hope that um, things change and change drastically. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit nervous Mm -hmm. 
how big the industry is and, you know, such a, a machine. Um, mm-hmm. There's so many different actors, so many different places in the world that are working in the fashion industry, places that aren't regulated. Um, so it, it's, I think it's a big job to do it, but I hope that things change. Um, but for me, I really want to see um, perhaps over the next few years, like a less less focus on trends and more focus on mm personal style and uh, wearing clothes for your own self-expression and, you know, buying less and just, you know, thinking about what you buy and really, yeah, just building a wardrobe of pieces that you're going to wear and love for a long time rather than continually always feeling this need to buy more. That's that's a really uh, good point. And I, I haven't actually heard it phrased that way um, yeah. to, in, to encourage um, your own uh, fashion taste as a way to combat falling into trends yeah and I think that that might be one way of getting around it because I think it's really important that we can express ourselves through our clothes and how we look I mean it's really important to find your own individuality and um, mm. you know I think that that's something that will never stop and it's it's really important but um, to find a way to do that where it's not so damaging to the world and the environment is is nice. <laughs> yeah. And probably more exciting uh, if you have your own unique, you know, kind of uh, style and voice in the end. What advice would you have to someone trying to start a sustainability business? Uh, I think definitely do your research. Um, mm. Start, see what else is out there, see what's missing. Mm. Um, you know, so much out there. Um I struggled a lot with in the beginning, like, why am I doing this? There's so many labels. So if you can offer something different and something mm-hmm. that's going to be people that doesn't exist, that's amazing. Um, but also um, to try and implement um, better ways of working right from the beginning, it's really hard to change some things if you grow into a bigger business and you haven't started the right way. So just spend, yeah, spend time setting up the infrastructure, setting up your processes, how you want to go about things. And also uh, perhaps having, yeah, just a really clear um, kind of rule book for yourself of what you will and won't do. Mm. Um, And I think it's Mm -hmm. good to have uh, rules sometimes. It actually helps you to be more creative and Mm -hmm. think more outside the square. Um, Yeah, so that would be... Yeah, what what would be an example of a rule that you set for yourself of something you won't do? So zero waste pattern cutting, for instance. Okay. That's something we will do, but that, that's our rule. So now mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we have to stick within those parameters and it can mm-hmm. get quite tricky times, but it also helps us to be more creative and come up with solutions that we might not have thought of otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um but I guess a rule as well for us, like uh, like small things, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. Firstly, the types of fabrics that we use. Um, mm-hmm. We like to get the same sorts of fabrics because it's easier for us to work with fabrics we know that work at the right widths. Things like we never use any metal uh, fastenings. Mm. We only use buttons. Um, I think they're oh, easy cool. to mend and place, things like that. So it can be even small things, but I think it's nice to sort of have a bit of a rule book of what, what you want to do and and, uh, and why and just kind of be considerate of all your decisions and, um, and uh, mm-hmm. conscious of why you're doing the different things that you want to do. Yeah, I like the, yeah, I like that there's like one big one and then some offshoots. So it's like zero waste is the backbone yeah. and then... Yeah, you have some other elements. Little, okay. little things here and there. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Probably. So what? Um, so we've talked a lot about you, your perspective as a small business owner. What about um, as a consumer? Like, what are what's some advice you have for consumers that that maybe they're not hearing or that maybe is misunderstood or just that that you think would make a big impact? Uh, well, I think you know we talked a bit about this earlier, but. Um, I really think uh, a big one is just how much people are consuming. Um, mm-hmm. I think just pulling back the amount that you're buying is just, if, if a lot of people do that, it's going to make a huge difference. Um, 
So I think, you know, it's that classic Vivian Westwood, you know, uh, <laughs> quote, where it's like, buy well and buy less. And I think that still is really, really important to remember even now. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's really mainly. Yeah, 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 the biggest one. Yeah, yeah exactly. the biggest one. Um, are there, also, I know you mentioned a few brands, but I was wondering if there are other brands that, you find inspiring or that you've kind of been tracking along um, and would recommend people look into? So, yeah, there's one at the moment that I love um, following um, is State the Label. It's a, one based in the US. Um, they actually don't have Instagram anymore, which I really, really admire as well. <laughs> um, they just send these great mail outs and uh, they have a studio um, where they make everything in house. They do hand painted textiles and it's just really fun and creative and, and playful. Wow. And, um, yeah, I really enjoy seeing what they're doing all the time. Um, and another label, um, Story MFG, which is a, a label based in uh, the UK. Uh, they have a really craft-based uh, approach, I guess, in the same way that State the Label have, but they're, they're quite different aesthetics. Um, um, but, yeah, they just have a really nice approach and um, a very different, uh, unique sort of look um mm, so very cool great. yeah okay so, some some to keep our eyes out for um very cool um all right is there anything else that you feel we haven't talked about that would really paint the, the picture of of how of of how you got started and the importance of sustainability or anything like that i can't think of anything off the top. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and then I uh, yeah, then I'll probably think of something. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then just a fun little thing. I was wondering if um if you could show us something in your studio that you've made that you are really proud of. Yeah, or love. Sure. <laughs> I mean, maybe uh, in the last bit of time. Okay, uh, so this is a, a coat that we've been or a little jacket that we've been working mm. on so uh, it is a zero waste pattern and i'm very very uh proud of it because it has taken like most of our patterns a good couple of years of experimenting and playing to get it right um uh, so this one is uh, we're making some garments but we're also going to be releasing it as a sewing pattern soon but it's just taking me a really long time because uh yeah, zero waste patterns can do that sometimes. Um, but yeah. Wow. And what do you use for the buttons? Uh, these are Corozo nut buttons. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're just a natural undyed um, Corozo, okay. which we basically use for everything. We pretty much have the same button style for every single <laughs> garment, but we like them. So. <laughs> yeah, no, the simplicity, yeah. don't make, don't make yeah. it harder for yourself. Yeah. No. Okay. Very cool. I loved it. Uh, thank you so much. And I enjoyed exploring your website and chatting. And I think it's, I think, um, yeah, I think this is a reminder also to, to look locally because, you know, a little bit of my impulse was like, oh, I want to go like buy your stuff. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm all the way in New York, so I'm sure there's, there's some cool, um, artisans here too, to look into. Yeah. So something to keep in mind as well. <laughs> Um, okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, I will let you we'll let you know when it's up and you can feel free to share it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. it. Uh, so and much. have a fabulous rest of your day. Yeah.